Donald Trump and Bernie Sanders a big push forward. Trump won Tuesday Republican primary easily with 35 percent of the vote. Sanders, who barely lost in Iowa, won the Democratic vote with 60 percent. Not only did Sanders pick up 14 delegates, but our exit poll shows he received 83 percent of the youth vote. He also finished 11 points ahead of Clinton with female voters. That's a group she was able to depend on in 2008. Republican John Kasich also has momentum this morning. He finished second with 16 percent, followed by Ted Cruz, Jeb Bush, and Marco Rubio. But Republicans preferred Donald Trump when it came to the big issues. Our exit poll shows 40 percent believe he is the best to handle the economy. 30 percent of the voters believe that Trump is the best to handle an international crisis. And Donald Trump is here, finally, live and in color, joining us at the table. Good morning to you. you when you walked in, Charlie said, what took you so long? We've been asking. We, needed, we wanted you here at the table. Well, I did an interview. I think, how long has it been since I did the interview with Two you? Two or three days. <laughs> no, no, but years. I'm no, talking about oh, in your yeah, old studio many, with many, the many, black many, walls. Yeah, that's and, right. That had to be 20 years yeah, ago or indeed, more. So right. it's been a long time. But here but we are, live and in color. We're pleased you're here. Yeah, we're delighted that you're here. Congratulations on the show. I hear really great things. First thing you watch in the morning. I watch it. Yeah. I do. I watch, Congratulations, I watch Donald, much, last I, night. Because it was a huge, much. huge win. So now are you feeling unstoppable today? No, never unstoppable. But, uh, you know, we had never a great... Never unstoppable, no, you? never. I, wanna, I would never want to say that. But we had a great period of time. The people of New Hampshire have been amazing, the way they just took me in. And I've been friendly with... You know, I have a lot of friends from the area, and I thought I'd do well there, but... What made the difference between Iowa and New Hampshire, do you think, for you? Well, I think we did really well in Iowa. I get no credit for it. You know, I came in second. I never did this before. I haven't been a politician. I was with uh, Iowa for six months. I was a politician. And I came in second with the largest number of votes ever, except for Ted. And... We had the problem with uh, Ben Carson, who I think was really, I thought it was a very unfair thing happened to him. If that didn't happen, I would have won Iowa. So I was happy with Iowa. It did really well. It's sort of interesting. I came in second, but the one that came in third, they made him like a star. I said, what about me? I came in second. What happened to me? So, <laughs> You're speaking was, of Marco Rubio. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, why the Republican Party is hell-bent, the establishment, on stopping you? Even Governor Bush said this morning on this program, it would be disastrous yeah. if you were the nominee. Well, Jeb is a person who, you know, he doesn't have it. He spent $38 million. But he's not alone, and you've talked about him yeah. before. Yeah, mm -hmm. I do. I mean, the Republican I Party, the establishment, worries about you. Charlie, they I want can to tell stop you, you that I am getting so many calls from members of the establishment, people in the Republican Party that were totally against me, and they want to join the team right now. We're doing so well. And it includes Chris Christie. He called you? Uh, he didn't call to say he's going to. No, no, but he me, called. But he you. did call me. Yeah, and what he, he said? He's a friend of mine. I well, mean, he's he a said? friend of mine. He did a really good job in the debate, and he's a friend of mine. He just congratulated me. He said it was unbelievable what you've done. I mean, the numbers were fantastic. Is he going to drop out? Is it time for him to drop out? I don't out? know. I mean, I don't know. We talked about it a little bit. He's. Uh, but do you think it's time for him to drop out? I'd like to see a lot of people drop out. I'd like it to That's be a few question, people. Donald Actually, Trump. I'd like you to get it down to one. <laughs> but that's not the question. Okay. Do you think Chris Christie should drop? I don't know. I don't want to get okay. into that, Gil. Right. I mean, I, I, you know, he really is. He's a friend of mine. He's been a friend of mine for a long time. And I thought he was very effective. Mm -hmm. And I was surprised he didn't do better, yeah. frankly. Mm -hmm. You had a decisive win in New Hampshire, 34 percent. There's a lot of candidates in the field. The four establishment candidates, as they're called, together gained a greater percentage of the vote than you. Since they're well-funded, do you think this will go on all the way to the convention? Well, I'm much better funded than they are. It's called my own money. I'm putting up my own money. So I'm much better funded than any of them. Mm -hmm. And when they put down Trump, they don't put down anything because I put up my own money. But mm -hmm. by doing that, I'm not controlled by the special interests, the lobbyists, and all of these other people. And a lot of people say if they check Charlie, they check, you know, the results, mm -hmm. they say that was a big reason I did so well. People are tired of it because okay, these politicians are controlled by the people that put up the money. Let me speak to that. People say you have changed American politics in the way that you're going about this. Have you? And what is the way that you're going about it that makes a difference? Charlie, I've heard it so many times, and I view it differently. Somebody called up a friend of yours, a very great reporter, and said, who I just keep quiet because I don't know I'm supposed to be saying this. He said, what, are the what does it feel like? What are the initials? Well, I'll, I'll tell you after the show. But he <laughs> said, what does it feel like? And yeah. I said, what does what feel like? You've changed American politics. It's amazing what you've done. I said, I haven't done anything unless I win. And I mean, not the nomination. I mean, win the whole thing. I haven't done anything because I can't do anything about it. You know, if you're a failed candidate, even if you go to the final step, you look at some of the people that ran for president, did a good job and failed. Now, in my case, it's different because nobody's ever won as an entrepreneur, you know, mm -hmm. New Hampshire and done as well as we've done. 
But I think we have a lot of but additional victories. But have you victories. changed politics? Um, probably. Uh, I did. New Hampshire much different. would have massive rallies. You know, we'd have these big rallies where everybody said you have but to John walk Casey in. But John Casey had like a hundred town hall meetings. Yeah. You'd fly in on your jet and do a big rally and fly back to New York. Well, I took the Verizon Center. We had 6,000 people and other people were having 200 people. And it's, uh, don't worry about that no. one. <laughs> so good one. But, but uh, you know, we, I'm, I'm lucky in that we get very big crowds. Tonight I'm going to South Carolina. We're going to have at least 10,000 people. And that was set up three days ago. So we get big crowds. But, but if they got big crowds, they do it that way Donald too. Donald Trump, where is this coming from? Because I hear two schools of thought. Either people are excited about your candidacy or they're mortified about your candidacy. I don't think mortified. I mean, I think people no, have respected people what I've done again. No, well, I think people, well, they may be, you know, not happy, but uh, mortified is a different kind of a word. Yeah, yeah, but politicians are saying they worry that they'll lose the Senate and they worry that they'll lose the House if you were the head of the ticket. And yet polls are coming out and polls are showing that I will beat Hillary Clinton easily and that I think I, I don't know about uh, the other one. I think the other one is going to be very easy to win. I, if Bernie ever gets it, I can't imagine that's possible. He's going to charge you 95% tax. But that I would beat Clinton. And, you know, I'll do something different than anybody else. I have a chance of winning New York, Charlie. You know, you look at these politicians, they always talk about the six states. You've got to win this one, that one. You have to win Ohio. You have to win Florida. I can change the game because I really have a chance of New York. I'm going to win Virginia. I'm going to win, you know, certain states. I'm going to win Michigan, as an example. Can we win South Carolina? Can we get to the issues? Oh, I'm going to win South Carolina. I think so, yes. Are you courting Nikki Haley? Let's get to some issues. Are you courting Nikki Haley? No, I'm not. I mean, she's somebody I know I like, but I'm not courting her. Okay. Talk about each issue. I was with some people who live overseas yesterday, and they're very concerned about what's happening in the Middle East. But yesterday we heard, we get you on the Middle East in a moment, but first, yesterday we heard the Director of National Intelligence James Clapper at Congress saying that North Korea's nuclear effort is the top threat to the United States. What would you do to deal with that reclusive country? I would get China to make that guy disappear in one form or another very quickly. And let me tell you, people say, How do you say, make oh, him disappear and assassinate him? Let me just tell you, no. Well, you know, I've heard of worse things, frankly. I mean, this guy's a bad dude. And don't underestimate him. Any young guy can take over from his father with all those generals and everybody else that probably want the position. This is not somebody to be underestimated. But why China has China control. Why I'll tell you why. It? Because China has control, absolute control of North Korea. They don't say it, but they do. And they should make that problem disappear. China is sucking us dry. They're taking our money. They're taking our jobs. They're doing so much. We have rebuilt China with what they've taken out. We have power over China. China should do that. Now, we Iran, can force the Chinese you know Iran, to take care of North Korea? I would force the Chinese to do it How economically. Do it? Oh. Economically, Charlie. They're sucking the money out of us. We have a trade deficit this year with China, $500 billion. They're taking money out of our country. They're taking our jobs. They hold all our debt, too. Well, you know what? I mean, they, we owe them. Think of it. They take our money, they take our jobs, they take our base, and guess what we owe? Okay. We owe them $1.7 trillion, okay? But we have a lot of power over China. Don't so, underestimate it. So you were saying to Nora's question, you would leave it up to the Chinese? No, no, I wouldn't leave it up to them. I'd say, you've got to do it. you got to do it. And if they said no, you would do I'd be very what? tough with them if on If they trade. said no, what would, would you do? I would very strongly stop them from ripping. I'm going to stop them anyway to a certain extent, but maybe I'd do it a little bit more forcefully. Yes. One other thing. We make that horrible deal with Iran. The closest partner of North Korea is Iran. Why didn't we put something in there when we're making a deal and when we're giving them $150 billion? Think, why didn't we do something with Iran where Iran gets in and we force Iran to get in and do something with North Korea? We don't do anything. Mm -hmm. We should have, when we made that deal, that deal is a horror show. It's one of the worst I've ever seen. When we made the deal with Iran, why didn't Kerry say, look, you got to help us out. We have a problem. North Korea, he's playing around with nukes. Because nukes, that's the whole game changer, Charlie. You know, if it weren't for that, we shouldn't even be in the Middle East. But we can't take a chance that somebody plays the nuclear game. So we should have done that also. Yeah. But China, in the meantime, has tremendous power over North Korea, and they take right. our money. So we have power over China. Ted Cruz, Syria, may be off the, uh, yeah, well. Syria may be off the, the front pages, but the situation there is terrible. It's Still awful. Dire, yeah. We have the Defense Secretary Ash Carter in Brussels convening leaders there tomorrow, including Arab states, asking them to do more. They say that we need more U.S. leadership, that we should commit U.S. ground troops. Should we commit U.S. ground troops? Well, you know, Syria is a whole different thing. And you look at what's happening. I, I view ISIS as very important. 
And I love the fact that Russia is hitting ISIS. And as far as I'm concerned, they've got to continue to hit but ISIS. But you know what and, Russia is doing you know in Syria? Interesting. Russia is hitting, no, they're hitting the both. groups that we're backing. Sure. And why are we backing the group? We don't even know who those people are. I speak to generals. They're saying we're giving billions of dollars of equipment to people we have no. Here we go again. Yeah. We're right. giving all of this money and all of this equipment to people we have no idea who they are. They're probably worse than Assad. I mean, I'm, Assad's no baby. He's not good. But who are the people that we're backing? Here we go you again know with that's, Libya. That's President Obama's argument. Yeah. Well, we I think don't that's know good. who the weapons you know, would I mean, fall into whose hands. We have no idea. Well, why is he doing that? I mean, he's giving them a lot of weaponry. And we're backing people that want to knock out Assad. Russia and Iran, which is now a power, we've made them mm -hmm. a power, they're backing Assad. We've got to get rid of ISIS. We've got to get rid of the people that but are chopping off everybody's but head. You say you have have a good relationship with Putin or would have a good relationship? I think with I would have a very good relationship, but, but who knows? So I mean, could you know. convince Putin to get Assad to step aside? Well, they've been trying to do that. Yeah, Could yeah. I? I don't think it's that important, to be honest with you. I think, frankly, let's say you get rid of Assad or you knock out that government. Who's going to take over? The people that were backing and then you're going to have, like, Libya, mm -hmm. right? You, you take Gaddafi. Oh, we have to get rid of Gaddafi. Look what happened after we got rid of Gaddafi. Look what happened after so we got rid of Gaddafi. So getting rid of Gaddafi was a mistake. It was just, yeah, it was, to me it was, it was a total mistake. mistake. I mean, Benghazi, Benghazi was the least, look, look at what's going on over there. It's a mess. Nobody knows anything about anything. You look at, you look at Saddam Hussein. We get rid of Saddam Hussein, the terrorists, it's the Harvard so of So getting rid of Gaddafi and getting rid of Saddam Hussein were both mistakes. Had we not done anything, had our politicians gone to the beach and enjoyed the sun, we would be in a lot better position than we are right now. Saddam Hussein, no good guy, but Saddam Hussein killed terrorists. Now Iraq is the Harvard of terror. You want to become a terrorist, go to Iraq. They'll teach you how, okay? Mm -hmm. Saddam Hussein was a bad guy, but you know one other thing he did he blocked Iran I mean once you once you knocked out that section all of us and I said it in 2003 2004 I was against the war I said you're going to have total it, the Middle East is going to be a mess They used to fight forever. They couldn't move they go 10 feet one way 10 feet the other now you have a total destabilization in the Middle East because we knocked out yeah. one of the blocks What's well, the difference in your appeal and and Bernard Sanders' appeal, because they both are appealing to arguments. They seem to be receptive to arguments against the establishment. Well, I think I am a little bit against the establishment, and he probably is also. I tell you, the one thing we have in common is trade. The only difference is he can't do anything about it. I can. He knows that China's ripping us, and he admits it, and he knows Japan and Vietnam. That's the new one on the block, by the way. They're ripping us big league in Mexico, and I do, too. The difference is I can do something about it. I will it's, take those deals and make them it's great It's great deals. to have you here. Yes, yeah. thank you, It's Donald nice Trump. to be with you, Charlie. Yes. We hope nice that you'll return. Yes, come yeah. back, I will. You'll return. I will. And I'd love to do it by phone. I mean, if no, you have no, no, phoners. No, no, no. How about it's some phoners? It's good to see you in person. We Charlie, want you to get dressed. To we want you to get dressed no, no, and have your pajamas and come. I'll be back. I'll be back. We'll see you at the debate on Saturday night. Good. as well. I look forward to it. Yeah.